When it comes to soldering SMD components to a PCB, then it is quite obvious that due to the small size of the components, it can be a rather difficult task without magnification. That is why I've been using this microscope for a while now, which is certainly not perfect, but overall it does its job pretty well. And many viewers really seem to like its recording quality as well. Only problem is that it costs $189 which is a big price tag for people who just want to solder one SMD circuit per year. The good news though is that there exist cheaper microscope alternatives, like this $15 one or this $45 one. But are such cheap microscopes really suitable for SMD soldering tasks? Or is investing in the expensive microscope the way to go? Let's find out. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. Upload your Gobo files today and receive high quality PCBs for ridiculously low prices. Currently even without shipping costs. And make your projects look more professional. As a true test for those microscopes, I will be trying to complete two SMD circuits through the help of their magnification. So let's not waste any time and unbox the cheap microscopes. When it comes to the packaging of the microscopes, then there's really not much to say about it. They all do their job just fine. The only silly thing, which is pretty common for Chinese packaging, is the exaggeration. Like for example, I highly doubt that we will see something like this, or this with the microscope. But anyway, after unwrapping the GP, I noticed that its material and build quality regarding the microscope itself and its partly metal base was actually not half bad. To judge its recording quality though, I firstly had to install its driver and software, which were delivered on a CD. After then connecting the microscope via USB to my computer, I started its software and was greeted with a blurry image, which means that everything worked correctly. But to be precise, there were actually two different pieces of software delivered. But since they were so similar and only differentiated themselves through the missing video recording but instead image editing feature of the second software, I'm only going to focus on the first one. Now after positioning the microscope above the PCB and adjusting the brightness of the LED light as well as the focus of the microscope itself, I actually got an acceptable image on the screen. The resolution is 640 by 480 which can be altered, but that is basically only downscaling or upscaling. On the side of the microscope, we also got a snap button to take pictures and a zoom button to, obviously, utilize the digital zoom. And with the basics out of the way, I started to use the microscope for SMD soldering, which did actually kind of work. Now don't get me wrong, it is annoying that I have to look at my computer screen while soldering and the PCB microscope distance is fairly small, but for one SMD circuit in a year, it does work just fine. As a last test, let's take some pictures, whose quality are also acceptable for the price tag. Even video recording did work with 30fps at 640x480, but don't make the mistake to increase the resolution, because the frame rate will drop down to 7.5fps, which is a nightmare to watch. The last positive feature I noticed was that you can adjust quite a few picture settings, but sadly that does not improve the video quality greatly. But all in all, the $15 microscope does for its low price a lot of things right. Moving on to the $45 microscope, whose most important improvements in comparison to the cheapy are a 4.3 inch LCD, micro SD card support and a built in LiPo battery which means no cable chaos. But as positive as all of that sounds, there are quite a few of negative aspects about this microscope. First off, the material and build quality of the microscope and its base looks and feels very cheap. The suction cup of the base does also not work on my workbench, only on perfectly smooth surfaces. The battery is charged through mini USB, 
which works just fine. But why do they bother giving me a 2 amp power supply if the charging current is limited to slow 500 milliamps? Maybe they were cheaper. But before I nitpick even more, let's position the microscope properly, boot it up and adjust the LED light brightness as well as the focus. The only problem was that no matter how precisely I tried to focus the SMD circuits, it always looked a bit blurry. At first I thought the LCD was the problem, but even the recorded video showcased the same problem. And while we're at the subject of video recording, let's just say it does not look particularly nice. Heck, I think the $15 microscope achieved similar results. And worst of all, even though the microscope claims that it records in 1080p, its video files clearly present a recording resolution of 720p. Now taking pictures with this microscope is also possible, but since they take around a second to shoot and the microscope's base is rather wobbly, the pictures will often look very blurry. Well, at least the digital zoom does work. And while all of that sounds like you should stay away from this microscope, I actually do prefer it for SMD soldering instead of the cheaper one. Simply because it's battery powered and I don't have to look at a computer screen. But of course, that does not excuse the other problems. So all in all, I had high hopes for the $45 microscope, but I was kind of let down. But for a positive change of pace, let's not forget my favorite microscope. It's completely made out of metal, its height can easily be adjusted, it has a relatively big working space, has bright LED lights, offers an LCD, takes micro SD cards, has a mini HDMI output to connect bigger screens and most importantly does record true 1080p footage with amazing quality and can take pictures with 12 megapixels, which also look decent. There definitely do exist better microscopes for SMD soldering, but for me this one offers a very nice balance between price and performance. But of course not everything is perfect. For example, does not only the LED lights need 5V power, but also the microscope itself, through a mini USB port, which can result in a cable mess. And while the firmware kind of hints at a battery capability, there is no built-in one, which might have even solved the last problem, which is that whenever the microscope restarts, all its settings are reset to default which includes the annoying screensaver timer, which starts after 2 minutes and makes you blind while soldering. And with that being said, my SMD circuits are finally complete and work like a charm. And you should now have a good idea which type of microscope would suit your SMD soldering demands. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative! And I will see you next time.